what is the critical frequency and what do we mean by coincidence as acousticians when we're talking about sound insulation? When we're talking about airborne sound, we know that the propagation velocity in air is 343 meters per second. And this is valid regardless of frequency. So all frequencies, they have the same velocity. Whereas when we're dealing with structure-borne sound, the propagation velocity varies with frequency. And what happens then is that at the critical frequency called Fc, the bending wavelength in the plate is the same as the wavelength in air at the grazing incidence. So there's going to be one frequency where these velocities coincide. That's the critical frequency. And that also means that when we have coincidence then, for frequencies that are above the critical frequency, there will always be an angle which satisfies the condition that sine theta equals lambda over lambda uh, bending wavelength. And here, here's the figure that shows that concept. So if we are below the critical frequency, the, the wavelengths won't synchronize in a good way. But let's look at it this way instead. I think this is a better graph. So we have the critical frequency there on the, on the left. You got the, the plate and you got air. And you see the wavelength is the same because the velocity is the same of both these. Now if we increase the, um, the angle as well, you can see there, you get this projection of the incoming wave for various angles but you still get a perfect projection of the bending wavelength and the, uh, and the uh, wavelength in air. As the frequency goes up, there will always be an angle of incidence that will have this coincidence with the, with the plate wavelength, the bending wavelength in the plate and the wavelength in air. And what this means with regards to sound insulation is like in this, this little graph from Jiprock's handbook. You can see up here, when, you, when we get to the critical frequency and we enter this coincidence territory, the sound insulation is reduced because you get a, a better, it's, it's easier for the sound to jump between the structure-borne sound and the airborne sound. And that's why the, the curve goes down here, because when we're talking about sound reduction index, a higher value is better, because this shows how much is the sound reduced from one space to another space. Yeah. That's the crash course in coincidence frequency and critical frequency. And in today's video, I just want to show you a little trick here with, uh, let's put this one a bit down now so we're visible. Pocket squares are an amazing tool if you want to create various outfits. So now I'm wearing green, gray window pane, and this little one with brown, blue, and some white grayish stuff here goes on. This works really nice. But so does this one. Orange line, blue, white, paisley patterns. Just throw this one in. I think it works wonders with this uh, combination. Looks, oh, it, the fold is not wonderful, but it doesn't matter. It's the colors, green, orange, blue, spot on. And let's just try yet another one for good measure. This one is also one of my favorites because this one is pretty simple. It's, it's like burgundy and, and gray, and that's it. So this one might be a little little too boring if you don't have anything else to to uh, pair it with but I think when you have an outfit like this when you got several colors you got it, it's excellent with the gray I think this one goes extremely well together it's like coincidence <laughs> and then but when you have the green and you have another color to pick it up so there's at least three colors is usually a pretty good uh, bet that it's gonna work so either of these three is just fine. But you see here, with just a little switch of the pocket square, I just created three different outfits. So, and these ones are very easy to pack in your, uh, uh, what's called, cabin luggage when you're out traveling. So if you're going to create many outfits, this is the way to go. See ya.